Good morning. I think we can get started now. Yeah, let's start. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome at the webinar on introducing an, an updated child protection case management training package for caseworkers. I'm super happy to see how many participants we have joining today. It's really, really nice to see all the enthusiasm for, for this training package. Uh, before we get started and open the webinar, I would like to point out that the uh, interpretation is available. So uh, I'm speaking in English, but you have normally a globe button on your Zoom where you can see that interpretation is available to Arabic. So if you would prefer to listen to simultaneous translation in Arabic, just click the interpretation button and then select the Arabic language. Um, also, we have a Q&A box. You would see it on your Zoom. It's like these two text balloons that says Q&A. If you have questions, you can drop them in the Q&A. It's better if you drop them there than in the chat, so we can uh, try to reply them along the way. And also during the webinar, we'll have two moments to look at questions asked. Okay, I think we're ready to get started, but uh, to open the webinar and, and to kick off this um, this meeting, I'm going to give the floor to uh, Camila, who is the co-coordinator of the Alliance for Child Protection and Humanitarian Action. Thank you very much, Ilsa, and uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the launch of this updated child protection case management training for case workers. It's not just one training, it's a whole package of trainings, and we'll be hearing all about it in a moment. We had over 1,700 registrants for today's two launch webinars, which is a record for an Alliance webinar. So I think this shows how greatly needed this updated training is and what a crucial intervention case management in humanitarian action is. Many case workers, as you know, are doing many elements of a social worker's job, a profession which usually begins with at least a year's training and supervised practice. With this in mind, the original eight day training was never enough in terms of its length or in terms of its limited focus on caseworker skills and direct services for children and families. This is why this new training is so incredibly exciting. Having reviewed all of the training packages over the last weeks, it's been great to see its comprehensive nature and how well designed and put together it is. This is all thanks to the efforts of the Case Management Task Force, as well as the generous funding of the donor for this project, USAID's Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance. The Case Management Task Force is one of our longest standing task forces and most active task forces. The amount that the task force members have achieved over their eight years of work together is really amazing. And it surely makes doing child protection um, case management in humanitarian crises a far more manageable, satisfying and successful task for children than it was previously. Certainly many questions I've discussed with case management teams over the years are addressed in this training. In my experience, when you're new to casework, once you've dealt with a certain kind of case, such as harsh discipline or early marriage, you might feel more confident the next time. You might think, aha, I know what I'm doing here and feel a sense of relief. But then you quickly realize that you don't because every case is different. Every child is different. Every, every family and every situation is different. And this is what can make case management so difficult and so stressful. It's also what can make it so difficult to support as a supervisor or as a manager. And that's why this training is truly a gift. It fills so many of the gaps that child protection teams have been struggling with in humanitarian and fragile contexts around the world for so long. Contexts where children not only have the day-to-day -day challenges of childhood within a struggling family, which might usually bring them to the attention of a social worker, but where they've also had the added risk factors or lack of protective factors caused by conflict, repeated displacement, or the ripple effects of having survived a natural disaster. This training has been a Herculean effort on the part of those who've led and supported it over the past few years. It's an honor to be able to help launch it, and I can't wait to hear more about it, including your plans for rolling out uh, the training in the coming weeks and months. 
as well as, of course, to know the outcomes of it on your programmes and the children that you're working with. So thank you very much. And back to you, Ilsa, to kick us off. Thank you, Camilla. Um, actually, we, we are a very big group. Um, so I will quickly introduce myself. It will be impossible because we're more than 420 already in the room um, for everybody to introduce themselves. I'm reading in the chat though. It's really nice to see that people are coming from all over the world. Um, so my name is Ilse and I'm a child protection case management specialist at the IRC. And together with the colleagues of the case management task force, we've updated the child protection case management training package. I will also uh, say because we're peaking, we, we at the moment we have 495, 96, so yeah, four more and the Zoom room is full. We put up a YouTube live. So for if you have colleagues who are trying to join, but they can't because the Zoom, it limits on seven, uh, no, it limits at 500. And you have more than a thousand people who registered, yeah. Um, that we we have a, a YouTube live. Uh, um, I think maybe we can drop it in the chat the link. So if you have colleagues who are trying to get in and they can't, um, please share the link to the YouTube live with them. But it's super super nice to see so many of you here. Okay. So. Um, I will quickly present the journey to a no child protection case management training package because it really was a journey. Um, so this training package uh, is the result of two years of work led by the International Rescue Committee on behalf of the Global Case Management Task Force. And um, we started actually using the 2014 uh, interagency child protection case management training package. Uh, Manami, could you could you show the next slide, please, if that's possible? Let's see if it works. Yeah, great. Okay, so we we started from the existing training package, and um, we we wanted to listen to child protection case management experts, including caseworker, case management supervisor, child protection managers, coordinator, specialists, everybody who's who's involved in in case management. And we started to do a survey, an online survey, and four hundred sixty nine case management staff from forty one different countries uh, replied to the survey. We asked them mostly like, what would you recommend changing? or adding to the content when we update the child protection case management training. We did interviews with case management task force members asking them the same thing. And then we, we organized an online workshop with different case management task force members to agree on like learning strategy, uh, on which content to add, and also to create a, a structure. What came out of this many consultations, because this was a whole process, if we could go to the next slide, is that the respondents mostly said that they wanted to focus on practical skills and less on theory. Um, and they wanted to have exercises in the training to practice their skills, um, preferably through interactive techniques. So nobody wants to sit and listen to a facilitator for hours, but they want to be uh, interactive, move around, have participant-led sessions. So we we added all of this into the training. Um, so, for example, they asked for role plays, case studies, games, and it's all in there. And then also we got a lot of suggestions on content to add. Honestly, it was really hard to cut it down because there were so many ideas on uh, content to add. Um, but we, the main the main things that we turned, which we put in it, is, for example, how to communicate with kids of different ages with different abilities in different developmental stages. Also, MHPSS was suggested many times, so we included this. It's one of the newest add-ons. Um, and also, we had, for example, how to use tools like safety planning, how to work on family tracing and reunification. So we added a lot of new content as well. Then the journey continues. So we have all of these ideas on, okay, what should be added to the, uh, to the training package. So we started to draft content, a lot of content. And um, we, we had it reviewed by the um, case management task force. If we could go to the next slide. 
Um, so each material was reviewed by the case management task force. So we drafted it, got it reviewed, did adjustments, and then we traveled. Uh, for example, I traveled to Iraq and South Sudan, and we also had colleagues piloted in Kenya. So we piloted these training materials because we had to try it out. Okay, what works? What doesn't work? What should we change? And based on also the feedback from these pilots, we managed to finalize the materials, integrating like the reviews and the feedbacks of the pilot. And this is the journey, how we created the child protection case management training package to what it is, is today. So the training package has become a lot larger. Um, if we could go to the next slide. Um, so it includes many more hours of, of training. We have in total in the full structure, 32 days of training. So it is really a lot. Of course, you don't have to, to organize all of these days of training. Uh, all at once, we put it into a structure that promotes gradual learning. In a bit, I will present what this actually means um, and how this structure looks like. But the, the main thing which we, we tried to do is that we wanted to develop a child protection case management training package that is as practical and user-friendly as possible. So it should be easy for any of you to pick it up and start preparing for a training because we're aware, especially in emergencies, time is limited. You need to have something that is quick and easy to get started with. Um, and this is really what we try to create. So we hope you will find it user friendly and don't feel intimidated by the size of it. So I said we, we developed a structure indeed that promotes gradual learning, but I want to quickly present as well what this actually means. Um, so we, we organized the case management training in three different levels. Um, firstly, we created an, a competency framework that outlines, that outlines the essential competencies for child protection caseworkers in a humanitarian setting. So based on all these inputs, we thought, okay, what does a caseworker need to be able to do? What does a caseworker need to know um, when providing case management? And we have three different levels of training. The first level you would see there is the foundational training. It includes actually all the basics, all the basics that we think, okay, this is what a, per, uh, a caseworker should know, what a caseworker should be able to do uh, before providing case management before meeting ch children. So this is really the foundational training, the basics. Secondly, we have a competency-based training that focuses on these essential skills, essential knowledge, and also a, we work on, okay, what is a child-centered attitude? Because we use child-centered as a term a lot, but we mean, okay, what is a child-centered attitude? So it focuses on the competencies of, of uh, a caseworker. And then level three is an advanced training. It includes actually four different trainings that are more advanced, but also optional. And how, how does this actually um, look like in terms of timing? So the idea would be that any person starting in case management will first complete the 11 days uh, foundational training on case management. Um, so this one includes, like I mentioned, all the basics before a person gets started. Um, after completing the training, the caseworker can start with providing case management and will gain experience. How we developed this uh, child protection case management training package, we wanted to acknowledge that we learn a lot by doing as well. For example, we learn out of different cases and we learn also with the support of a supervisor and a coach. So the idea is that you complete level one, a caseworker completes level one foundational trainings and then continues to work and gain experience. After a few months, we, for example, say, for example, preferably three months, uh, recommended to be more. Um, the Arabic voice is low. Um, I hope the translation is working well. If it's if it's low, I hope maybe it's it's just a quick fix with the sound. And I will try to maybe speak a bit slower because I know I, I often speak too too fast for translators. So after I think it might after, be the, the the volume of the voice. So maybe if Ola the translator can talk a bit louder, I think that might be it. Okay, good. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, I hope it works. I see thumbs up in the meantime, so maybe that's a sign that it, it's working. Um, second, we have the competency-based training of five days. This, this training actually uses the experience that the caseworker will have gained in the past uh, few months to continue to develop and learn. So as we will see in the presentation later, it has reflection exercises, uh, further case studies. Um, it really tries to build on the experience that exists and building on the skills and practice these. Afterwards, the caseworker will continue to gain experience and strengthen their case management competencies because really it is continuous learning. And then we arrive at, for example, the level three trainings. They are four, um, uh, four optional trainings. If we could go to the next slide. Um, that are advanced, uh, but optional. So um, we have the CPIMS plus training of five days. We have a family strengthening training of three days and a half or four days depending on how you contextualize it and how you organize it. We have an MHPSS training uh, for four days as well. And then we have a training on unaccompanied and separated children. So providing case management to UAAC of three days and a half. So the idea would be that you start with level one, you gain experience for a few months, you use this experience to further strengthen your skills through the competency-based level two training. You continue to work, receive support by supervision and coach, um, like individual supervision, case management meetings, and then we can have these optional uh, advanced trainings like CPIMS plus family strengthening, MHPSS, and UAC. Um, before I move on and present the training materials, uh, I want to see, do we have questions in the Q&A? We have three. Um, mainly about availability of the training. Um, mm. Yeah. And perhaps maybe clarifying if there's a training of trainers or, or mm. just the training, how that works. Yes, so we, we didn't develop a TOT um, because it's also really hard to, to train uh, a TOT to, to every one of you. We did, when I present the materials, we have the facilitator guide, which provides really a lot of tips and how to provide this training. And we will also have on the Alliance uh, website, the peer-to-peer -peer support that will be provided. Maybe Camilla, you can briefly explain what is what is meant by the, the community peer-to-peer um, -peer support. Yeah, so we have a... Um... Community of Practice, the Child Protection and Humanitarian Community of Practice. We've posted the link in the chat box today, which you can register for very quickly. And we've posted a page there where people would be able to ask each other questions. We can also post up um, the answers that uh, Ilsa gives to the questions that are asked today in the two launch webinars. And we can also try and answer any other questions that come in. Um, about the training as people deliver it, but hopefully also a peer-to-peer -peer support will be um, available for people who are rolling it out and practically practically doing it and, and using it. So please feel free to join there. And if you have any difficulties, feel free to contact the Alliance Secretariat. I also see in the chat appearing that some people are not able to join. Yes, it's because it's it Zoom peaks at 500. But there is a YouTube live, so people can also follow on YouTube. The only issue there is when you follow on YouTube live, you won't be able to hear the translator. We can drop the link again in the in the chat. When you ask about getting access to the various training program, yes, you will be able to download them with one click on the Alliance website. I will present later how they will be shared. But yeah, we made this materials for all of you. So, so we're not going to keep them for ourselves. You will be able to access them online. Okay. Mm, I will move on. If there's still questions coming in, feel free to drop them in the Q&A because also at the end of the webinar, we have some more time to, to reply to questions. So please don't hesitate to ask them. Um, and, and we'll take a, like a, some time also at the end of the presentation. Okay, so what are the training materials? 
uh, that are used. I explained the journey, I explained the structure, but I also quickly want to explain, okay, what can you use uh, when delivering these trainings? So we, we developed four different training materials. The first one that you see there is a competency framework. So in the competency framework, it outlines the different uh, competencies that a caseworker uh, should have or requ uh, acquire uh, when providing case management. So it outlines the essential competencies for a caseworker, and it also includes uh, also indicators uh, because we made a self-assessment with it. So any caseworker can take up the self-assessment, reply to like look at the indicators of the competency framework and think like, okay, can I do this? Or I do this sometimes, I do this all the time. And you can do a self-assessment, for example, before and after the training. Um, so this one forms actually the basis and it's, it's replacing also, for example, a traditional exam style pre and post test. Uh, it's actually framework that outlines the competencies that can be used in the training, but also in supervision and coaching. Then the second document that we made is a facilitator's guide. So we have, and we try to keep it as short as possible. We have a facilitator's guide, which is like an accompanying document that provides you the overview of this whole case management training package. Um, it includes, the, for example, the sample agendas, uh, it highlights what needs to be context, uh, contextualized. It gives you a list of, okay, what do I need to bring um, or need to purchase when preparing for the training? It explains room setup, group size, all of these type of things that you need actually to, to get ready. It also includes some tips for facilitation. So this is, is an accompanying document for the different trainings. And then we have a PowerPoint presentation with facilitator notes. So each training includes a PowerPoint presentation. And in the PowerPoint presentation, you will have, for example, the agenda, the module aim, the learning objectives, some key content, and also uh, the different exercises. And then at the end, you will have key learning messages and reflections. Because we wanted to make it as easy as possible to pick up and practical, like I said earlier, um, the facilitator notes can be found in the notes pane. So when you will download the PowerPoint, you will see that everything that you need um, as a facilitator in terms of step-by-step -step instructions. Sometimes there's also sample scripts. Of course, you will use your own words when you present. When you present. Um, we all do this, but it's just like as a source of inspiration. But normally everything that you need to know is in the notes pane. So as a facilitator, you should be ready, like you should be able to give the training by picking up the PowerPoint and using the notes. And then we have the last uh, training material. And I think, honestly, it's the most fun one um, because I, I facilitated this training a few times in the pilots. And it's really fun, I think, to facilitate with a workbook. So in this training package, we're done with um, printing all these different handouts and trying to organize them on a big table and then they get mixed up and everything. So now you will print one participant workbook one per participant and this participant workbook includes like all the information all the handouts that they need so it includes for example also an overview of the module the learning objectives uh, some relevant definitions but also the case management forms case studies role play scenarios matching games crosswords all of it is in there and also at the end you will have closing reflections on the learning objectives which you can take uh, for example uh, for caseworkers, you can take it with your supervisor. So this workbook is also something that you take home after each day of training. Um, yeah, so maybe before I move on, you could see the slide, for example, PowerPoint presentation. You can see I just put a sample slide applying a socio-ecological approach. So you would see, for example, this gets presented on the PowerPoint presentation. And then you would uh, refer to the workbook. And then, for example, participants will fill out the socio-ecological module. You will provide some time for it. So it's, it's, it's connected and it will be used along the way. So normally the slides also refer to the pages. Okay, so how to, how to prepare actually for, for this training, how to use the materials. So 
I kind of make, uh, uh, we, we kind of made a preparation checklist. So first of all, any facilitator will have to read the facilitator's guide, which provide you the full overview of like, okay, how to prepare, how to set up the room, how can I meet my agenda? What do I need to contextualize? Then you will have to review the, the PowerPoint presentation, especially the facilitator notes and go over the participant workbook. So before any training, uh, you have to review the different materials. But then, and this is a very important one, you will have to contextualize because we do expect, also I saw in the chat, you know, like there's people from all over the world joining this and we, we're, we hope that this training package will be used in different humanitarian settings. There will be content that needs to be contextualized so that, for example, it matches um, it matches the context in which you work, it matches the child protection concerns children and families are facing within your context, that it takes cultural considerations into account. So there will be a number of, of um, content, yeah, a number of, of PowerPoints and workbook pages that need to be contextualized. We highlighted them for you in yellow. So normally for the main things that will need to be contextualized, you, you can, you can find it in the facilitator's guide, the overview, and also they are highlighted. So it is recommended that facilitators devote sufficient time for contextualization. For example, we made plenty of case studies. Uh, we try to mix them up from basing on different contexts, but you will have to probably adjust them um, to your own context. And then also these trading materials, they will be available in English, French, Spanish, and Arabic. So the slides, the PowerPoint slides, the facilitator notes, the workbook pages, all of them are translated to Arabic, French, Spanish. So they, you will be able to download them um, um, in the different languages. If you're going to facilitate in another language, um, you will have to indeed also translate. Okay. The last bit that I want to present, I know I'm talking a lot. Um, but I, I, I do think it's important so I can present to you how the package looks like, how to use it. Um, okay, what is, the, what is the content of the different levels of training? As I mentioned, the package is huge. We have 32 days of training. So I, it's impossible for me to present the, the full content into detail. It would take us too much time and soon you will be able to click and download it and, and look at it at yourselves as well. I quickly want to go over the different levels, but I will try to keep it very brief. So level one is a foundational training. Like I mentioned before, it has the, the basic um, knowledge and skills required to provide case management in line with the interagency guidelines and standards, because all of these materials are also based on interagency case management guidelines and are in accordance with child protection minimum standards. We have 11 modules which is, is quite a lot. Um, why did we come to 11? Initially we had 10, but after we piloted it for a few times, we realized that it was really needed to create module four on MHPSS. So we added on top of that a full day on MHPSS. Uh, and this is how we arrived at 11 days and not 10. Um, however, this training is divided in different blocks. So you don't have to give full 11 full days of training all at once in a one-off. If you want to, you can, of course, but it's divided in, in different blocks. So for example, block one is foundations of child protection, which is module one and two. Um, block two is module three, communicating with children. Block three is uh, the role of a caseworker to provide immediate support and MHPSS, module four and five. And then the, the fourth block is the case management steps. So we go from identification and registration all the way to case closure. The way the training is designed is, is that each session, because we have modules, but the modules are divided in different sessions, it really includes how to and then something. So for example, how to communicate with children with different abilities, how to respond with empathy, how to plan for a case planning meeting. All of these things, it's really tried to make as practical as possible. We, de we developed this training 
to be given face to face because after the consultations, the majority of respondents said, no, actually we prefer face to face training. It's also much more fun, honestly, to give face to face training than online, but it can be adapted to, to remote training if needed. Okay. I will keep you a bit excited about level, level one training um, and then it will be available online soon. Now we have level two competency-based training, which includes five modules. So this training, like we saw in the structure and the timeline is after a caseworker has already gained some experience, preferably three months, um, but more is recommended and it builds on level one. So any participant to the level two competency-based training needs to have some level of experience and needs to have completed the level one training. Um, we first start with a module on essential case management competencies, which also builds on the competency framework that we explained later. And then we have module two and three on personal competencies. Module one, for example, module two, for example, part one of the personal competencies, it's really, a, yeah, I, I enjoy facilitating this training. It's, for example, about blind spots, unconscious bias, how to drive for diversity and inclusion, while uh, part two is about negotiation strategies, how to manage conflict, how to coordinate in, for example, very complex cases. And then module four is about communication and MHPSS, and it applies motivational interviewing, which is a very important technique for caseworkers. So it has a full day on using different motivational interviewing techniques. And the last one are the technical competencies, for example, mapping out your child protection system, um, um, how to manage a caseload, to manage high and low risk cases. So competency-based training, five modules, and it's five days. We also recommend this one to be given face-to-face, -face, uh, but it can be adapted to do remotely. In terms of group size, because there is a lot of reflection exercise, a lot of actually sharing of experience. We recommend that, that this one is done in a smaller group because sometimes it can get intimidating to share in very big groups. Um, so this is level two. And then we have level three, the advanced training, um, which are four different trainings. So this level three is also quite big. The first, um, we also recommend that Caseworkers, like we saw in the timeline, have completed level one. This is mandatory and recommended to have completed level two before starting to level three trainings. The first training is CPIMS Plus, and this training provides CPIMS Plus end users uh, the, the support like to learn to navigate CPIMS Plus in a way that it supports case management. So, um, this training is for child protection caseworkers, but also supervisors, managers, coordinators, and it learns you how to use uh, CPIMS Plus in supervision and coaching, to monitor quality, to fill in your forms, to log your cases. So it contains um, five modules. Um, for example, also it includes uh, information management for case management. And actually it, is, it should prepare any end user of CPMS plus caseworkers, supervisors, and so on, to get them ready to use CPMS plus in every day. Um, this one is developed to be able to provide face-to-face -face or remotely. Both are possible. Um, we, yeah, so this CPMS plus will really help, for example, um, teams when they're rolling out CPMS plus within their agency. The second training is family strengthening. So it's a three to four day training. And it's, it's something that we didn't have a training about yet, but it came out of the consultations as well. It is, it's actually focusing on preparing, uh, no, in um, supporting a caseworker to get the necessary knowledge skills to equip them to apply a family strengthening approach through the case management process because kids have families and how to work together with their families. Uh, it includes different tools to use, techniques, how to go with them through each step. So this is a three to four day training. And then we have MHPSS, which is a four day training um, as well. And this is, I think, the biggest adaptation from the 2014 is that we integrate MHPSS 
in each level. So we have a module on MHPSS in level one, we have a module on MHPSS in level two, and we have a full training on it in level three. So this training actually uh, prepares the, not supports the caseworker to strengthen their knowledge and skills to provide focused but non-specialized MHPSS um, to children and their families. So it includes, for example, things like understanding stress, trauma, how to respond to self-harm, what is the limit of your abilities, like when the limits to your role, when to refer to specialized uh, PSS, what is grief and loss. And it also includes this huge handbook um, filled with focused non-specialized MHPSS interventions that the caseworker can do. So there's loads of activities that you as a caseworker can do um, uh, with uh, children. And this is included in the MHPSS training. Um, but again, it's really important that for this training, participants have completed level one and two. And then the last one, on behalf of the case management task force, UNICEF, UNICEF also developed a three days and a half training on supporting on a company and separated children. So it, it aims to strengthen the knowledge and skills of child protection caseworkers in how to prevent a family separation and how to address the child protection concerns that come with it. So it includes two modules, for example, understanding the causes, the impact and the risks of family separation, and also another module on okay, how to support uh, unaccompanied and separated children throughout the case management process, including alternative care and family tracing. Okay, so I'm coming to the last part of the presentation. Um, I know I talked a lot, but I'm going to reply, if we could share the slides again. I'm going to reply the question that everybody's been asking already is how can I access this updated child protection case management training package? Because we all want it. Um, so the release of the child protection case management training package will be done in three steps from this Monday. So um, in only a few days time, if we could, yeah. On this Monday, you will be able to access the competency framework and the competency self-assessment for caseworkers, the facilitator's guide, and the full level one child protection case management foundational training package will be available on Monday in Arabic, Spanish, French, and English. Um, so you will be able to download it on the website of the Alliance. We, do, we, we don't have the link now at the moment, but it will be, it will be widely shared. For example, you the, the link for the webinar, we, we will share it also through the social media and it will be on the website. When you go to, for example, case management on the Alliance website, you will find the link to download the level one and the facilitators guide and the competency framework. So when for those who already have a training planned, you know you can you can start, for example, reviewing the facilitators guide and the level one from Monday. Then uh, I will I reply to this question later. Um, then we have level two child protection case management competency based training. It will be a week, uh, two weeks later that we will upload it as well on the Alliance website. And then thirdly, the level three trainings, child protection case management, advanced training, including CPMS plus family strengthening, MHPSS and UAC, they will, they will be uploaded third. So normally um, we do recommend, even though, for example, for experienced caseworkers to do a refresher of the level one, because level one con contains a lot of new content. And it is really a gradual training package that level two will reuse, for example, case studies and will refer to slides that were seen in level one. It's interconnected. So if you would already get started with level one, uh, by the time you're ready with it, level two and level three will definitely be online in, again, in Arabic, Spanish, French, and English. Okay. Before we close, let me quickly look at some questions. Camilla, I'm gonna, let's do this together if possible. Let's see which questions yes. we have. Yes, so I've responded to all the easy ones in, nice. the, in, in written form, but you've still got about 15, 16 in there. So you might want to have a little look. I'll read out um, one or two perhaps that are very different from what we've seen in the chat box. So 
Um, we have, does the competency framework replace the capacity assessment tool? I don't know about that one. No, so so there is like from the um, from the alliance in general for child protection as a whole, there's like um, a competency framework. It will not replace it. It's complementary. And then this tool, the self-assessment, also complements the capacity assessment that we have in supervision and coaching. It is when we created the self-assessment, we did a desk review of all existing uh, assessment tools and evaluation tools for caseworker. So it's not replacing, for example, the existing ones. It's actually, uh, it complements it. Okay, thank you very much. And we can type up some of these responses and put them in the mm. community of practice so people can read them a bit more later. Um, this one, I think we can respond to. Has there been any restructuring of the intervention framework from the 2014 case management guidelines? I. I think we are we haven't changed anything in the guidelines in this, but we now one of our members of the case management task force has got funding to update those guidelines yeah, that exactly. will be done in the coming few years. Um, there's quite a lot still on training of trainers, so I wondered if you wanted to just cover that again. I know you touched on it earlier. Mm. And I also saw, will the course be free or paid? Don't worry, it's free. You just have to click and you will be able to get it. <laughs> Um, TOT, you know, like we, we, I wish we could do a TOT and and train everybody in like how to how to be a trainer of this training, but we we didn't provide any TOT. I hope that really a lot of it will be clear in how to provide this training by um, looking at the facilitator guide and the notes, and indeed that we also have the the community of practice. So, for example, if you register and you have questions, we'll be happy to support. For example, I'm, I'm staying with IRC for some time. I will also register there. And then, for example, if there's questions, um, you can ask them. We, we will um, respond to them. And then other, other um, teams can also see the replies. So maybe your question is relevant for multiple teams. So that can be really helpful. I also saw a question which I, I would like to reply to is like, how would you prefer to, how would you suggest to structure it as it is huge? I understand that the training package, especially the 11 day one is, is really big. I would indeed divide it in different blocks. Um, and for example, that you would do first the foundation, two days of training, basics of case management, then I would do, uh, for example, part of the training, the, the second and the third block, or you can separate them as well, how to communicate with children, and then the role of a caseworker in providing PSS and immediate support. Um, and then the, the, the uh, fourth block, which is the biggest one, is the case management steps. I would recommend them if it's possible to do it in like consecutive days of training, but it's also possible to split them up. So if I would plan for the level one training, I would plan it over spread over a couple of weeks, but we do recommend not to leave more than two weeks between blocks of training because it really builds on, on, on previous modules. And then if there's too much time in between, I think it will be, it will be hard to keep the, the linkages in, in mind. Any other question? There's certainly some more. I've cleared up a few more as you've answered them, but maybe you can hop back on the Q&A box. Um, I think the one on CPA IMS is covered, that there will there is a training there, comprehensive training in level three on the CPA IMS. Um, also, can I have the email for the webinars team? So those who've been involved in the webinar today will be checking in on the change makers community of practice, which we've shared the link to on the chat box so that we can um, consolidate, you know, any further questions mm. there and also to provide peer to peer support. Um, what else do we have? Um, there's one from Rehab Yaya, which I've asked for some clarification on but you can maybe have a look it says any guidance tips um, for persons with disabilities that will support in session training implementation I don't know if you have any thoughts on that from your no. work so far so so how to adjust participate like facilitation we we don't have it but we do for example in module three 
we have uh, a session also on how to communicate with children of different abilities. And in the workbook, for example, there's uh, two pages with tips on, okay, how can you adjust communication? Imagine that the, the, the child has difficulty hearing. How can you adapt, adapt communication when the child has difficulty speaking and so on? So within, as a caseworker, we do have it, but for the participants, we didn't include this in the facilitation guide. One useful resource we were shared at the Alliance Secretariat by UNHCR was a checklist on um, running an event for people with disabilities. Um, so we can post that also on the Changemakers page for this training if I'll, I'll just check that they're happy for us to share that externally, but it's a very useful checklist about how to set up the venue, how to make materials available in different formats, that kind of thing. So that might be helpful. I also saw a question from Simone. Um, are you planning to have modules on CP and GBV in the future? So um, GBV is also included and integrated in this training package to a certain extent. For example, in module five on immediate support, it has a, a session on, okay, how to provide immediate support in a, if the, the child has been a survivor of a sexual violence or abuse. We try to integrate it, but I also know that the Caring for Child Survivors training package is also still being updated. It doesn't, it's not included, for example, in level three training, but it is being updated and will be shared also uh, on a later time. Okay, then we have a specific question on the CPIMS Plus from Waspi. Would you please clarify if the CPMS Plus refers to specific system, i.e. Primero or a new system? You can see we have Annalisa. <laughs> It, 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 it mostly focuses on Primero, but we have it, we have it also, um, for example, you will have to contextualize it based on the, how, how the CPMS Plus is configured in your context. So, for example, we use the global forums in the CPMS Plus training, but if you have different forms and the system is configured uh, differently, then indeed you will, you will have to adapt it, but it focuses on Primero, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, so there's one at the bottom, please. Would you give a brief summary of the case management steps and my role as a caseworker? Is that covered in the level one? I'm assuming it is, Ilsa. Yes. Yes, exactly. So for each of the steps, we have the six steps have the six different modules and each step is actually a full day. For example, um, again, everything is organized in how to, for the step assessment, you have sessions on how to support the child to express themselves, different techniques that you can do. For example, with implementation, it is then linked to that, for example, to um, how to make referrals, how to provide PSS, case planning, how to prepare for case planning. So for each step, actually in the training, it should be included everything that you need to know and need to be able to do. Uh, which is covered in level one. So when the steps is really full in level one, while level two is focusing on skills and you, these skills, for example, how to respond with empathy, you will apply them in each step. So level two does no longer focus on the steps, but on the, on the competencies. Okay, maybe the last question because it's, it's, it's sticking to 10. Okay, so um, maybe just quickly to share that we got a couple of questions that relate more to, well, one that relates to CAFAG. So are there any considerations for military and paramilitary officers and how do we involve our different agencies when there's no case workers per se? Per se? I would direct people to the CAFAG task force specific, um, we have a specific case, CAFAG task force who have a specific section in our community of practice on change makers where you could post that question and I'll also try and get it redirected there. They've got a number of trainings that are available online and there's also a question at the top which says can we incorporate this training on project design? So the CAFAG task force have developed a training that talks about project design for CAFAG programs which you might find useful and we'll see if there's anything else through our LD colleagues that might be useful unless Ilsa you have others. Okay, then maybe um, we, will, we, will, we will stop replying questions here, but like with the community of practice and also we will still see them in the box, uh, in the Q&A box, so we'll try to reply them later. 
um, we 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 come at one hour, which I think is 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 a good time to hand over to Annalisa to actually close the webinar. Thank you so much, Ise um, and Camilla. Um, I hope you can all hear me well. Um, wow. <laughs> This is such an exciting journey. Um, and for those of you, and I see a lot of names that I recognize um, in the chat, um, you know, this is a journey that started in 2013 when we pulled together the case management task force and we initially started working on the case, the first case management guidelines, which it is exciting to see that they're being uh, revised and updated with all the learning from the past decade. Um, and these materials are really a culmination of the learning that we have done over the past 10 years on really um, solidifying and improving and um, ensuring that the one-to-one the -one support that we're able to provide to some of the most vulnerable and at-risk children in the countries where we work is really um, of the highest quality and that we provide a really strong and um, uh, evidence-based um, um, training and support to those that are dealing on a day-to-day -day basis with, uh, with these children. So it's really, really exciting to see the level of, I love the three levels. I think it's exciting to see how it's competency-based and really focusing on those competencies that we really need to see amongst um, these, uh, these caseworkers and those that are supporting the case workers and the case managers, et cetera. So it's really, really exciting. Um, I would like to thank um, a few people. Um, and I think this has been an exciting journey. Um, and over the past 10 years, it's been a journey that IRC has been leading together with all the members of the case management task force and the CP uh, Alliance. Um, with the support of um, the Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance of USAID, BHA. And it's been a really exciting journey to be on with them um, in really constantly pushing ourselves to test the limits of how we can really um, um, really focus on what, um, what are the soft skills that are required when in some of our countries, you know, we don't have the luxury of having uh, trained social workers, and so how do we ensure that these uh, these staff have the capacity to really support these children? Um, it's really exciting to see all the hearts, all the hands up <laughs> going up throughout the presentation, and all the excitement to receive these materials. It's great that they'll be the first, the level one will be out on Monday, and then the following materials will be out in the next um, few weeks and month. Um, and I think it's it's just um, I think a celebration as well of the of how the child protection community has really come together behind this this approach, um, our case management approach to ensuring the best possible support um, to to the to the children that we're supporting and to the most vulnerable children in a lot of our context that we're supporting. So it really shows a really strong collaborative, coordinated and uh, complementary kind of support of how do we work together to really ensure that the best services, the best support is there for the, for the, uh, for the communities, for the children and for their families. Um, I was personally really excited about the family strengthening because I think that's, you know, if we strengthen the family, then the, the, the child's kind of immediate support network is there. And I think it's really important that we focus on the child and that family as well. So. I would like to thank um, Ilse and the IRC child protection team um, specifically. I know Crystal, who's not on uh, on this uh, on this call today, um, she had um, uh, another little baby a few weeks ago, but um, would also, you know, be really excited to see um, to see this finally coming together and us being able to present this. So really thank Ilse and Crystal um, and others who have been working on this. Um, and uh, the CP Alliance and the members of the case management task force for really working with us um, to make this possible. So really, really exciting. Um, I know we're over and uh, thank you 
it's amazing how we've had 500 people on this and you've all stayed for the full hour. So thank you so much for making uh, the time for this. And um, yeah, really look forward to hearing how you use these materials and how we kind of continue to learn on this journey together. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.